This is Fitzy and Whipper. I'm Fitzy and that's Whipper. Welcome to the pod, guys. I hope you're having a great day today. It's Fitzy and Whipper here. Uh, we've got a big show coming up for you. Um, I couldn't believe we got so many calls on this, but what did your partner make you change about? It could be something on your body, it's something in your life before the wedding. She wanted me to wear deodorant for the first time. And now I do it regularly and I'm a lot better off. Uh, amazing. That's an amazing story. Mm-hmm. You should give us a call on 13 20 14. That's part of the pod that's coming up. And also, it would have to be one of the best life improvers we've ever done. Yep. If you need some life hacks to get you motivated for 2022, we have got some doozies today. Fitzy and Whipper. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh, yeah, the life improver. Your life improver. Just like little ones like this one. Learn the names of ten trees. Okay. You know what? When you go for your walk, at least you know what that, what kind of tree that is. Mm. Interesting. I mean, it's a, it's just a little one that yeah, you sure. know improves oh. your life. Have you got a favourite tree? Gum tree. Okay, very good. I do like the smell of a pine tree, though. Mm. Yeah, some beautiful pines. Those Norfolk pines, you know, shaped like a flame with military posture. They're just beautiful, well aren't said. they? There's Thank two. You. Anyone else got the name of uh, another tree? Perhaps Segoia. Well, Segoia. Oh, beautiful oh, trees in the world. I love I mean, the, Stephen yeah. Segoia. He's my favourite <laughs> actor. The Morton figure is obviously very <laughs> iconic to Sydney, as is the, um, what's the purple one, Tom? Jacaranda. Jacaranda. Yes. Now, there's so many of those in Sydney because in the 1920s, if you had a baby, you got given a small jacaranda. How can you make Andrew. anything Hello. boring? It's just such You're a still there. Actually, have you got one Hello. before we oh, start? Mate, this course? was amazing. Five million views on TikTok for this one, and I had no idea so many people were getting it wrong. So, you know when you make fairy bread, people are complaining about how messy it is to make fairy bread. Yeah. A lot of people were just getting their bread, you put a little bit of butter on it, and then they would sprinkle the hundreds and thousands on. Yep, on top. Yep. Foolish. And I, did, I thought everybody did this. You put the hundreds and, th- hundreds and thousands into a bowl, right? Like or into a, a container. Into a sandwich container? Yeah, perfect. You butter your bread, you turn it upside down, and you stick it yeah. down onto or the hundreds and thousands. Or you can use a plate with, like, rimmed edges. It's exactly oh, right, Sarah, yeah. um, yeah, to control so your hundreds. Yeah. All right, I get just it. had no idea. Well done, mate. 13, 20, 14, if you've got one. Andrew in Edgecliff, what's your life improver, Drew? Yeah, hey, Charles. Um, it is the percentages are reversible. So 8% of 25 is the same as 25% of 8 so, so, so let's say that again. Do it's that again, Andrew. It feels, it feels like it's a yeah. riddle. Go again. <laughs> it's percentages are reversible. So I, I learned it when I was teaching the kids. Yes. Yep. So 8% of 25 yep. is exactly the same as 25% of 8. Two. Okay. Oh. Well, well I do it everywhere. So 12% of 120 mm. is 120% of 12. So 8% of 25 is 0.16. Sorry, 25 that's, two, yeah. Andrew, that's a great... So you are Are you a maths teacher? No, I'm a dad. You're a dad. Oh, this is great to know. 25%. We're going through percentages with the kids at the moment with maths homework. Two. So you swap it around. I can oh. work the street so they can work it out. Really good start. Really strong start. I've got a BP fuel car to give away as well at the end of this. Ashley in Blacktown, what is your life improver? Um, so, you know those decorative um, cupcake holders that you have like from like a dollar at Woolworths and like all different colours? Yep. If you put them in your cup holders in your car, any kind of crumbs or whatever, when you clean it, you can just take that out and put a new one in. See what I mean? Ah. Right here, right good. now with Ashley. This is like the... Uh, the double sheets for the kids. Yep. Yes. You know the plastic sheets that you have mm-hmm. underneath? Have another one underneath. Do two. So when they do wee the bed, you just take the top one off yep. and bang, you're, you're straight on. You don't need to replace it. You know it. what we do, which is absolute genius. This will probably get written up. Tell PR this is coming, Tommy. Because there is a... You um, do it over the PA yeah, now, Tom. This is I'll massive. Let, I'll let them know. We, when Hello. I, when Hello. I, when we've got a, a, like a, bi- a, a nappy bin in Francesca's room. And when we change the bag, we always put a spare bag at the bottom of it under the bag we put in. Everyone does you, that. You did that one so, a yeah. week ago. Thanks for a Peter Pan. Oh. So then... Oh, repeat a Pan! Oh, Pete, repeat. My name's on my feet. So then when we pull it out, there's always a spare Yeah, you told us, mate. Let's get, a, let's get a proper one. Ellie in Beaumont Hills. What's your life improver, Ellie? Okay, this is the life changer, everyone. So when you have your shoes that are too big for you, clothes, shoes, you put in a sanitary pad. Oh, what, in what? the shoe or at the end of the shoe? 
in the shoe so your whole foot doesn't slip around in mm. your shoe. Oh, oh, Another purpose God. for the liner. But do not do not take do not take the sticky bit off. Yes. Okay. So it so it grips to the shoe. Is that what you're saying, Ellie? Well, you if you if you take the sticky bit off, it will leave sticky residue. So right. don't do that. So, mm. but it doesn't move around because because it's. Um, Big enough to be able to hold in the shoe, you know. Mate, that is genius. You know I've got so many spare ones at home. Well, a lot of people's feet do sweat, and there's nothing worse. I don't think it's for sweat, though, is it? It's just well, it's just to, it's to stop your foot slipping around. There is a bit sh- of moisture in your. It's because your shoes are too big. Yeah, no, no, no. Not I know, to no, soak no, up foot no, sweat. No, but she says when when it actually gets the moisture in your shoe as <laughs> yeah. well. That's yeah. what she's talking about. That's what it soaks yeah. it up, your peanut. Yeah. Hello, I mean, she, she kicked it off with <laughs> when your shoes are too big, so that's why you pop your pad in. Ehab from Liverpool, what's your life improver? Hi, oh, everybody, how are you guys? They're pretty good, Ehab. Um, as a uni student, man, with all the word counts and all the essay writing, it was very hard to find um, to make it meet the word count or stay within that range. So the life hack that I came up with was choose a body of text, save it as an image, and upload it back in the document so that people couldn't pick up on it. I don't get it. Oh, I'm the, confused by that. A tough one. Okay, yeah. Oh, um, right. So you're, you're getting the text and you're, you're screen grabbing the text instead of yes, copy and I, pasting. I'm it just to show the text, roll back in the document, and it wouldn't come up in the word count. Oh, God, yeah. Because yes. I, I, yeah, Ehab, I always worry sure. about writing certain words in emails like mm. credit card that people can hack that you're writing the word Ooh. credit card. Well, this oh, would work well, then. Well, this is the thing. If you put a screenshot in there, it's not picking it up, Ehab, is it? And, uh, no, not at all. And it helps out with um, with graphs, graphs and all, all those images come up as, as part of the work count as well. Yeah, right. That's a clever idea, Ehab. That's really good, That's buddy. Really oh, good. Hang on, Leno's on. On the flip side, Yo. some of my friends at uni, if the word count was too low, mm. would just copy and paste the same paragraph but make the ink, the, the colour white. So it didn't show up. So it didn't show up. But then you'd have an extra... So Genius. That, yeah. Leno, you win. Well done. <laughs> this is unbelievable. That is, that is that really is, clever, that Leno. That is a double life hack right there. Oh, my there. God. Amy in Oran Park, what's your life improver? So my life improver is if you're on a phone call that you no longer want to be on, you put your phone on aeroplane mode and it will hang up and it will just say call failed and that other person won't know that you've actually hung up on them. Right. Yes. This has been this has been the best yes. round we've ever had. Mate. This is so strong. <laughs> Amy, I'm going to do that with Whip today. Huh? Well done, mate. That Hello. is a beauty. Lily in Little Bay, what's your life improver? Um, so mine's a bit cheeky. Um, so when you, if you have an event coming up, you just buy like the cheapest tickets you can find. And then on the actual day of the event, go on to Ticketmaster, see which seats are available, and then just pick which of ones are best. I'm confused. Okay, so what? So, so you buy your ticket, right? The yeah. cheapest ticket. Yeah. And then when you go, and then you, oh, you're saying you get the cheapest ticket, but you're allowed to get the best seats, Lily. Is there a way around it? Is this a hack? Uh, yes. Yeah. So basically, if you see, go on to Ticketmaster, you can see which seats haven't been bought. Yes. And if no one, sh- if they're better than yours and no one shows up to sit in those seats, then oh, you know, no one's going to check. So the map's pointing out which seats haven't been purchased, so yeah. you know which ones are available. So you're not buying again, yeah. you just no, know where no one again. will be sitting. Do you know what that's yeah. like? Oh, man, Do you know what that's Lily. like now? Because you know every airline charges you to sit in the emergency exit row. But if you rock up on the day early and they're free, yep. you don't have to pay for them. Right. Because mm. often there's that 24-hour period with airlines. There's so many good calls today. Oh, but, but that has been the best round, I, I th- without a doubt. I think the $100 BP fuel card um, is going to go to Amy in Oran Park. Woo! What up, Amy? Hey. When it comes to holidays, are you an ocean, pool or hot tub person? All of the above. Then it's time to book a trip with the lot and make up for missed holidays at whatif.com. What if? It's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travelling. A bride has been slammed for demanding that her fiancé changes something about himself before the big wedding day. If this is a weight issue, I'll be devastated by the poor lad's situation. It's not. It's not, mate. Um, okay, so the woman... She went onto the internet and she was asking if she was unreasonable when she approached her fiancé about the possibility of him wearing contact lenses on the day of the marriage. Because of the photos, she wanted the photos to be special. They're there forever. 
I mean, in my wedding photos, I've got hair, which is great. I look back and I go, that's the moment in time where I yeah. did have hair. You know, and I'll have that forever. I can look back. Yep. You know what I mean? With the kids and I go, get, that's, yeah. look how good looking your old man yeah, was back then. I understand how photography and time works. Now, the, the fiancé has a genetic condition called heterochromia, <laughs> which means, which I think was what Warney had, he has two different coloured eyes. Wow. She suggested that it would be nice if her partner, who has one blue eye and one brown eye, could have matching eye colours in their wedding snaps, <laughs> especially if it meant they could match eye colours between them. Oh, come on. Come on. To start with, you can Photoshop. You don't need to wear a contact well, lens. No, I agree. Um, There's so many filters out there these days that you can change, can you? Second to that, I understand couple dressing and maybe me wearing something that pairs or matches with your partner, okay. but I don't think anybody has ever gone, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if we had matching eye colour? Hey, imagine if your baby browns match mine. Oh, it's yeah. I agree. Give me a break. I, I think it's quite unique what are you to have different. About? But she's probably thinking that the focus is away from her and on the two eyes, the blue eye and the brown eye. That yeah. everyone's going to be looking at the wedding photo. Or are there are there people coming along to the wedding maybe that haven't met him and they don't? She doesn't want to hear just behind her back. Freak! Oh. <laughs> You know, it could be some old school friends or relatives from overseas. The, the fiancé is livid. He's not happy at all. This mm -hmm. is who I am. This is who you are marrying. This is why you've fallen in love with me. So don't tell me that my beautiful blue eye is going so yeah. you can focus on the brown eyes. My one brown eye. That's my the one wedding brown. night we do that. It's not for the wedding photos. <laughs> you know what I mean? But i tell you what. You'll need both eyes it, open there. A tough conversation, too, yeah. just to go, honey, you know how much I love you. Like, we have... This has been the best week of my life before we're getting married. It's quite quick. It was a quick turnaround. Yeah. But I just... Is it, you know, I love everything about you. I love I love your face. I love... That, yeah, it is you. But I just... Yeah. Is there any chance... Imagine asking if you could... If you could lose a couple of kgs just before the wedding. That's horrible. I mean, imagine if a guy said that to a girl. You know, a mate of mine, the guy, same guy with the Adidas tracksuit pants that had holes in them that he would wear around the pants... Uh, around, around the house without any underpants on. You know when a guy wears tracksuit pants without any undies on, you can just sort of see it swinging on the crotch there? Really bad look. He also had a, quite a collection of material that had an adult nature. Oh, well, that's fair um, enough. Yeah, and he I kind of... asked my partner to get rid of that as well. He collected that through his bachelor days. He played a lot of cricket as well with the lads, and, you know, there was a, a huge collection. Be worth a fortune. What's cricket got to do with it? You're saying um, that cricket is a sick eyes. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> cricket is a sick eyes. You know, really strong German section well, had a to few his photos collection. from Tim Payne, did he? I think he may have. Joel, uh, how's that? Oh, oh, I'm mean, not out. He's out. I'm no, I don't want that out. That All the plums. All me plums. Joel from West Ride, what did you quit before your wedding, Joel? Uh, my wife asked me to uh, quit smoking. Okay. That's fair smoke, enough. Lady. And, and did you love her enough to do that, Joel? Well, it, it'll be 20 years married this year, so I think so. Oh, Joel, good on you. Chuck, well, it was either going to be then or when you had a kid, because you don't want to be on the lung busters around a baby. <laughs> but, Joel, were, were you a bit jumpy around the wedding, though, when you got rid of the, the darts? I've got to be honest, I, I did say yes initially uh, to getting rid of them, but I snuck a few sneaky ones in there, got busted for that. But, oh, uh, no. <laughs> Mate, I still remember Tim Boston. Oh, no, Timmy Boston in the change Tim, rooms. Tim Boston did some silly things over the years, but I still remember at his wedding with Simone, and it was a beautiful day. He was a bit nervous. As Simone was walking down the aisle, Ooh. Tim was finishing off a cigarette. Oh, oh come and Sarah, on. And still had quite yeah. a bit to go. And there was this moment where he was just... Really tuning sucking it. it back, sucking it. and then just as she got to him, he flicked it off to the side. It was so romantic, isn't that amazing? And then the kiss after the vows with just that ashtray coming at him. Right. At her. Joe in Blacktown, what did you have to change for the wedding, Joe? So, boys, for about eight years, I had grown my beard out. It was absolutely magnificent. Yeah. I was well known for it. No, and my wife, my current wife, said before you come meet family. Gotta go. Oh, Joe, Joe, did you think what? about choosing the beard over her? <laughs> <laughs> Not for a moment. Not and yet moment. you but... just called her your current wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was bad wording. That was bad yeah. wording. But uh, I must say, five years later, two kids later, uh, I, I think it's making a slow and gradual return. Oh, okay. I see. You're back in. So you've done your time, Joe, five years, and you can slowly get the beard back. 
I think so. Yeah, well done. Good on you, Joe. See, I had a mate like that who had grown a beard for 11 years. And then he shaved it off because that was the demand from her before the wedding day. And she'd never seen him without the beard. Shaved it off. He went, oh, God, grow it back. Yeah. You look better with it. With it. Yeah. You know when some guys I lose remember, their moustache? Well, dad, dad, lost, dad always had a moustache his whole life. And yeah. I remember when he got burnt, the switchboard blew up in his face. I think that was scared. I cried because mm. I'd never seen Dad without a moustache. <laughs> It didn't help that there was skin everywhere as well. He burnt, oh, he burnt oh, the rest of his oh, body. But I was like, where's your mo gone, mate? Come on. Michael in Lewisham, what did you have to change for your wedding, Mick? Uh, my wife made me change all my friends from school. She's, oh. uh, an ex- as cruel as that sounds, she's an exceptionally good judge of character now that I know. Yeah. But back then, she said, they're just bringing you down. They're a bunch of users and uh, they're oh. bullies. So and were they, Mick? changed incredibly. Now that you look, well, absolutely were, it absolutely were. Oh, Mick, but that would have been hard at the time because that would have been a majority of your invite list, wouldn't it? Well, we we're actually at a, yeah, it was. We were at our engagement party. We spent big money and had a, a, a at Catalina's at Rose Bay. We had a beautiful day, oh, and uh, my wife was in the bathroom and she was privy to a conversation that went something like, "He looks fantastic, but why would he waste his time with her?" Oh, oh no! Oh no. no! Did you have to have uh, that tough conversation with that mate, or did you just let it go? That was a woman that actually said that. Yeah. She said also that um, she he could do better. Oh. So my wife came out of there. She put on a brave face. We had a great night. And then she came home. She said to me, right, this is how it's going to go. Oh, <laughs> but Mick, would... let's be honest, Mick. Have you had sort of blues at home over the years where you thought I probably could have done better? Uh, no, not at all. No, I didn't well think said. so. That, woman you'll ever meet. that was a oh, test, well sir. That was like that a last bit of test. And you passed. Well, well done, Michael. Mick. Joe in Springwood. Husband can't say certain phrases. Otherwise, bad news. What's going on, Joe? Well, I'm from the North Shore, and he's a Westie, and he often would say use or um, I'd done it instead of I, I did the thing. So, yeah, I, I told him he had to kind of fix the way he spoke before we got married. Oh, Joe, but that's who he is. That's the man that you fell in love with, that Westie. I know, but he sounds so much better now. Okay, so you've straightened him out, have you? So was did, did, he doesn't say use, guys, are the, my, my, my favourite anymore, Joe? No, he doesn't say that anymore. He does sometimes, occasionally, if he's had a few drinks, but most of the time he's he's much better. Doesn't finish a sentence with but, does he? No. You know how sometimes you hear that? The other one that pushes Whipper is when people say something. Yeah. Something. Instead of something. Do you know what a lot of sports people say that? Something. Yeah, I know, and I always think of you. The word I can't stand to, you and it's an American say- thing, is gotten. Gotten, not a word. It's not a word. Not a word. It's an American thing, and everybody yeah. does it now. I just got gotten home. No, I just got home. Yeah. It's pretty simple, guys. Steph yeah, I'd done Ke- it. Steph in Campsy, what weren't you allowed to change before your friend's wedding, Steph? Um, so I was a bridesmaid in the bridal party, and she said I wasn't allowed to get a haircut. Oh, what? Why? Why? Because what? You had long hair. You wanted to go a bit shorter, Steph. Yeah. So I had long hair, and I wanted to do one of those cute, shorter, like um, like a bob, yeah, like those bob And I was yeah. talking to her about it, and she said, "No, you're not allowed to. You have to wait until after the wedding, so I can have long hair for all my bridesmaids and all the photos." Oh, Steph, and you just kind of went along with it because it was her day, did you? Oh, you have to. It's their day. Mm, how annoying, Steph. She hates Let her go. I don't like obviously. Her. Reese in Blacktown. Come on in, Reese. Oh, good morning. How are you guys? Yeah, good, really, Reese. What did you have to change for your wedding, Reese? My my language. My oh. my partner is Thai, and he speaks fluent Thai yeah. and no English, and I speak Nitnoi Thai, which means a little bit. Yeah. And he... And yeah, oh, Can you give it's us a, a very of... interesting relationship, but we managed. What, what, did you did you do the vows in Thai on the day, or, or can you give us a bit of a heads up of what you had to say on the day, Reese? Uh, on the actual day, so I'm I'm actually still in the process of kind of getting married. Yeah, which is very difficult from overseas, but it, when we were, <laughs> we've had many a time. I can't say it on air, but we've had many a time where he's gone to say an English word, yeah. and, or I've gone to say a Thai word. And like I said, that the results are just horrendous. Okay. Oh no! Um, it just, just, just think of your worst nightmare in terms of saying. Right. You're saying something in a different language, okay. and then Funny. the meaning is really off. Reece, really so. are you, are you going to get? Are you going to get married here or over in Thailand? Absolutely here. I want to yeah. get married at the Hydro Majestic. Oh, oh beautiful, beautiful, beautiful! And a couple of gasps on the balcony there, overlooking the Blue Mountains. Come on, it's Australia, mate. Tha- I'm not going anywhere else. It's Tha- my country. Yeah, true, but Thailand okay. would be good at the moment. Oh, wouldn't mate. It? Yeah, oh. Party full moon at 
at clear water. Psycho. Um, do you know someone who we haven't mentioned on this topic? And I don't know how he's escaped, but the transition of second-hand Selvo shop Tom oh, yeah. to the oh, private yeah. school kid look that his wife no, adjusted him to Tom, be. My wife did throw out all of my tracksuit yeah. pants. Tom, Tom, how much you... weight did you lose? Oh, fair few kilos. That 30 was before odd. Inga, though. Oh, it was oh, just... It was right on, on it. Yeah, right interesting. Tom yeah. liked cowboy shirts with yeah. eagles... Uh, Screaming embro- eagles, yeah. ...embroidered onto the shirt as well. You were a big fan of those. We used to travel <laughs> around the world and go to op shops and Tom would go, I found another eagle. Yeah, and the eagle, I must add, did not always have to be screaming. So no, just, no, no, what about not the, what at about all. the Pants like the jean, the baggy jeans he used to wear fits, and they Boot just leg. kind of had stuff. <laughs> they were bootleg Boot cowboy boots <laughs> with a heavy boot <laughs> with a Pharrell Williams hat on. It was a bit of a weird look. Remember his Tom Hardy stage? <laughs> Love to know if there's a weird family tradition that goes on, which you feel the pressure of even because you don't really agree with it. You might think it's a bit dated or a bit odd. Uh, That's where one bride has found herself after. It's a family tradition on the male side of it. He's really excited about this, but it's something that happens on their wedding night. And that is that he wants to cut her out of her wedding dress. What? They even have a special knife that is used for this tradition only. Stanley knife? Don't think it is a Stanley knife. I don't think it came from the local hardware store. Um, would you, did you cut up your wedding dress there? No. no, I've got them both. They're taking up a lot of closet space. I would think, though, this would be more like a sword, wouldn't it? I don't know. Oh. It says here it's just referred to as the special knife, which mm. is kept in a special place within the family's home. Um, people, when this story came out, thought it was the most ridiculous thing they've ever heard. This was a tradition for several different people and cultures back in the medieval and Victorian times when women were property, not people. You can't do this. No, you can't do this. Men Isn't dragging it? brides to the bedroom by their hair and offering them encounters what? with weird behaviour. This is not today. But it's oh, also, God. I find it weird that there is a special family knife that you use for the night. And knowing that, it, you know, like you, you see... Oh, get out the knife. Gramps is in the corner going, hmm, don't Ooh. forget about the knife. Knowing that, you're, yeah. you, and you're being married into that family... You, you don't want to slip sickos. up either. It could really ruin the night's activities. Yeah, if after you, several drinks. You know what I mean? And you, knife. you pull your knife out and you mm. start... Slicing. Do you go from the bottom or the top? Depends on the dress, I suppose. And you just. I haven't thought about it too much, but one other person has said, okay, we'll buy the bride two wedding dresses in case she wants to actually keep the wedding dress oh, no. so it's not cut by a knife if that's the weird family tradition. I don't like it. Tommy's um, in laws have a tradition at your um, oh, yeah, at all wedding. The, at all the family weddings. Yeah, you had a special knife as well, yeah, Tom. Yeah, well, it was a giant um, it was a sword. naval sword. Oh. Um, yeah, because they have a big naval history. So, yeah, the the, so- have you got in the, in the Navy oh, there yeah, by you have that village there, people? Um, Tom and- got out his sword and cut them. Well, when my father in law revealed it um, at the wedding. This song was Which funny. one were you dressed as? Which one from the village people? <laughs> Construction site for sure. Weirdly, I was cowboy. As, I'd come as the cowboy, but the um, uh, yeah, when he revealed the sword, I almost felt a bit threatened. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah. Fruit ninja. Right. I thought it was gonna, you know, lop me head, me head me, off. Me head so off, what, mate. So what does he do with the sword, Tom? We use it to cut the wedding cake. I thought it was quite a nice tradition. Did you like it, Sam? Yeah. I just find it quite aggressive because it is super sharp. Oh yeah, right. it's a real sword. Super sharp. It's like a samurai. Where do, where do they keep it, Tom? In, in a sheath? Too personal. Yeah, it is kept in a sheath. Um, the in golden a, sheath. In in the golden <laughs> sheath in a locked cupboard, <laughs> guarded by LMFAO, which is oh, what? Uh, it's very <laughs> strange. Anyone that gets near it gets glass. <laughs> Your wife. <laughs> Your wife's dad is a professor, yes. and it was known as the Professor's Blade. Yeah, the Professor's Blade. So. The Professor's Blade. Yeah. Oh, so scary. He shaves with it too, I believe. Well, I don't. Yeah, no, oh, absolutely. God, that thanks is, for sharing, is, Tom. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Right, Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. If you have a weird family tradition, we want to hear from you. Michaela's g- given us a call from Penrith. What's your friend's weird tradition, Michaela? Hi, um, my friend's blow out their birthday candles before everybody sings happy birthday. That's weird. Okay. You can't. Okay. Oh, I mean, it's the build-up. Happy birthday's the build-up. Everyone gets it, and then it's hip, hip. Hey! And that's when you do it, Makoda. And you're singing in the dark, and there's wax all over the cake. It's just woeful. That Doesn't make sense. Has anyone pulled your friend up on that, Makoda? 
Yeah, plenty of times. It's actually um, a tradition for two of my friends from completely separate families, and we don't know where it came from. All right, we'll do what are the chances you know, tomorrow based on that. Do you know uh, two friends? Do you know the little prayer that you do before dinner? I don't know if you. We used to do it every now and then. But what, what did I, you do? What did you say? Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let this food to us be blessed. Amen. At home. At home. You're Ma- right. I, and it was only on Mum's side of the family. Dad was never into it. And then we stopped doing it after a while. But the, I always found it funny when you went over someone else's house mm. and it was a big family thing where you all had to hold hands and do it. And then the kids would get to a certain age where they don't want to do never, it anymore. Never Sarah. experienced it. See, we do it whenever someone brings a new boyfriend or something to the table. We you pretend we're her. hugely religious and awesome. you say to them, all right, you have to say, Grace, it's welcome to awesome. the... Oh, welcome, James, mate. to your first dinner. Um, family could tradition. Please, could you please say, Grace, it's a family that tradition. That is a great just idea. Sweat balls. Meet the fuckers. Very much. Charlotte's giving us a call. What's your weird family tradition, Charlotte? Um, our weird family tradition is measuring toes on birthdays. And if your toes have grown more than two millimetres, you get an extra 20 bucks per what? toe. It's a massive family competition. Right. Yes. So, and that's obviously just for the kids, or does grandpa's toes continue to grow? No, unfortunately, grandpa's toes have been measured, but he doesn't earn much money at this point. You know, it can be pretty ugly, the feet. Charlotte no. sometimes so I mean if everybody's kicking off their shoes and socks oh. you know you've got yeah. sort of this tinier parade in the lounge room yeah. you wouldn't want to do it around Sarah next thing you know yes. oh my god yeah licking that stuff up oh, oh Sarah god. which is another family tradition with McGill oh Bruce. is it just Stephanie in Yaguna we're talking weird family traditions do you have one Steph hi guys so our um, weird family tradition is we have two birthday cakes yeah. Um, one is for blowing out the candles, singing happy birthday. Mm. The other is for at an unexpected time throughout the happy birthday song, it gets smashed in your face. Oh, <laughs> fun. But, All right. Yeah. Knowing that it's coming, though, Steph, are you allowed to fight back or not? you just got no, to accept it? You have to accept it and take it. And the annoying awesome. thing is then you have to be prepared and not... You know, if you're out, you can't wear makeup and stuff. No. Oh, and Steph, you know is. what, though? Is that second cake that goes in your face, is that more of just like a cream pie? Yeah, oh, it's more of a, it's a sponge cake. Just yeah, a you've got the friendly cake spongy. Cream. So, you know. Still taste all right. Take that into consideration. Okay. Your, your Woolies mud cake, you can't go wrong. How much are those? MDG was put it up on as an Instagram <laughs> story. $4, I think. Okay. Though, mate. Four that's <laughs> that's a good post. I did it for the team because I wanted you guys to have a little bit of cake on a Thursday and I've been roasted about it for the past four years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alana in North Sydney, weird family traditions. My family has a toothcaster. Has a what, sorry? The tooth fairy would always mysteriously put our teeth in a cactus in the kitchen. Oh, so they would cut what the teeth would come back at some stage, Alana? Yeah, they would. Oh, well, they'd miraculously stay in the kitchen and the tooth fairy could keep a record if our teeth were clean enough. Oh, this is a good idea. How did it begin? I'm not sure. I'm the younger sibling. But um, by the time I got around, it was well established. Actually, it's not. It's not a bad idea too to see how to, uh, how clean the teeth are <laughs> when they and come then out. Tell the kids. Well, oh, this one looks a little bit dirty. You won't be getting any money if you, any of your other teeth yeah, fall out. Yeah, sure. Mate, how, oh, we still struggle to get the kids with cleaning to brush the teeth. How quick? I mean, don't get me wrong. We we're all the same growing up. But we, Lenny can knock a, that off in eight seconds. We put a minute on the clock. Do you? You got to keep brushing for a minute. And I'll count you down from 10. But in the cactus, I mean, great that you can personalise it and you can get in touch with the tooth fairy as well to say, hey, we've got a cactus in the kitchen. Well done. Make sure you stick the pegs in there. Grand Prix time, guys. This weekend, Sunday, the race is on in Melbourne. MDG flying down. You know what? MDG's heading down to Melbourne tonight, today, right? I walked into the news booth. He's got his suitcase. It's the size of a trunk. It's a shipping container. Oh. And I said, mate, what? Is the whole family going? I didn't realise you're taking the bub as well. Is Charlie heading down? I assumed it's full of toys and milk bottles and sterilisers. No, no, he's got three nights, three different events, yeah. ready to go. Someone tell Instagram. Melbourne, so, t- Melbourne turns it on for Formula One week, oh and yeah. they haven't had it for two years. There's a oh, city right. ready to party, and I'm ready to join them. Do you know what, MDG? I was down there the other night, and I <laughs> stayed at the Pullman, which is right across Ooh. from the track, mm. and you could see just a couple of cars driving around. You could see the punters starting to warm up. Yeah. Melbourne is ready. What event have you got tonight, mate? So tonight is uh, the glamour on the grid. Must so be. it's a party oh. on the actual start-finish line. Yeah. 
where uh, you're supposed yeah. to wear uh, an elevated suit. And Melbourne takes their fashion a Don't little they? bit more seriously. What's Bronte, what's Bronte wearing? Yeah, no, someone has to look after Charlie back here in Sydney, so we couldn't both make it okay. uh, down to Melbourne for the week. So that's Can a I, shame. What's an elevated suit? Yeah. So you take a suit and then you... Uh, you elevate it in you the elevate air. It. <laughs> I, I, I walked into MJ Bar yesterday and I said to the guy, I said, I need to wear an elevated suit. And he goes, what is that? I was like, I don't know. Give me a suit. With a, a suit with a feature, you mean? So something yeah, that pops? Extra. Yeah, so I've got a, a red velvet jacket. You know what I mean? Oh, oh that's oh, elevated. Oh, we're elevated. I we're elevated. I think he wore one of those last week as a joke, didn't he? I think, yeah. I, I think we both did. He elevated. That yeah. maps event. Oh, you'll, be, you'll be levitating, mate. You'll be, wow. you'll be off the ground with excitement. But look, you got to you got to meet Melbourne with Melbourne. I hope it doesn't get cancelled, mate, because the article I'm looking at here. This was 2020, guys, when oh, yeah. Robbie Williams uh, was cancelled at the last minute, the day before, and the Grand Prix, sorry, Australian uh, World Touring Melbourne is suing the Grand Prix for eight million dollars. In losses, that's the money they want because they had to pull Robbie Williams from the world stage that would have been performing for the party of the Grand Prix. Why, why did they? Why did they get rid of him? Well, because it was here. shut down. They didn't go oh, ahead to the Grand Prix. Okay, got yeah. you. But you can't Follow really back. sue, can you? Because COVID, like, there was no oh, choice. Man, that's a tough one, isn't it? And does Robbie actually care, or do the organisers care? Like, Robbie probably went. Actually, you know what? I'm good to stay home right now. You can't ask for your money after that. Yeah. Depends what it said. I mean. It would have been like renting a house. We've got a 30-day cancellation policy, right? For a, for a disease that none of us know about that's going to sweep the globe. I mean, you're right. Robbie, when he got the phone call, lying in a hotel room, he's probably just had the club sandwich. Hey, Robbie, the gig's off tomorrow night. No way. Okay. Well, he really needed the cash to get through <laughs> next week. Yeah, he wouldn't have given us stuff at all. You can't sue for this. this well, you can right. because of losses is what they're claiming. $7.5 million in losses because Robbie Williams did not perform and the event was cancelled. Uh, who's the big act this year yeah. in DG? Who's performing? I don't actually know. No, to be yeah. So, you, no. I, the, the, Shannon Noll, I think. If the, you can get Nolsey and Guy Sebastian yeah, in the same the room track. at the same time, now we're talking the about The biggest... Well, the highest attendance for any gig in Australia ever was the 1985 Adelaide Grand Prix, and it was Bon Jovi, 200,000 people on the straight. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Awesome. You can awesome. imagine, after a big so day of, of racing... All of Adelaide. Yep. All... <laughs> yeah, funny, mate. All... <laughs> um, that, that, that is a... What, what, it's a smart move. Why wouldn't you open up the whole yeah. straight yeah, yeah. and everyone was there, just goes and gets a free... Well, you get a free concert at the end of the day. That's Dang, the way to that do it. Oh, have a go at the lineup here. Yeah, what do so, you got? So Friday, the Rubens headlining. Saturday, Peking Duck. Sunday, Bliss and Esso. I mean, poor. Look party. out, Bon Jovi. That is a party. What is? Come on, they couldn't get it. See, no, you would have had to have booked local to yes. ensure they could be here. After, true. especially if they're suing for eight million, you it's wouldn't want to risk it. Next they're year, nervous. you think well, it'll be see, international. Foo Fighters played a couple of weeks ago in Geelong. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, it's the Grand Prix. It's yeah. not like they're, they're struggling for cash. It's great to see, too, the Daniel Ricciardo um, glass shoey, which you can now decant your wine into. I know the big guy has ordered one, which is great, mate. Congratulations. Yours is on the way. Yeah, $700 well spent. And the shoey tradition continues. Do you see at the, um, I'm not sure what they call it in the AFL um, W for the Brownlow they had last night. Yeah, Craig, um, uh, Craig Starsevich is yeah. the Brisbane coach. Yeah, the coach of the Lions. She's got the boots straight off. Because his player won, yeah. and bang, he's just nice. tipped one down the throat from the shoe. Well done, Stars. It's still continuing. Now, a lot of people thought this was an April Fool's joke. Dyson, one of the biggest companies in the world, revolutionised vacuum oh, cleaners. Yeah. British. They're British, isn't it? He's a it's, sir, isn't he? So that's a vacuum cleaner without any cords on it? What? You mean a really big dust buster? The per... First person to ever do that. That was unbelievable. Well, his, Come on. His big thing too, which I think part of the design is Mr. Dyson, uh, is the ball, the mechanics within the ball and the ability of the swivel. I think you did, Tommy. Correct me if I'm wrong. How many prototypes to get the Dyson vacuum cleaner to where it is? I think it was 5,000. So he built it 5,000 times and kept tweaking it and he'd just make one tweak each time wow. yeah. to, to identify Tom, how... It? Yeah, so yeah. it was the first bagless. And th Bagless, vacuum, that's right. And yes. then he spent two billion dollars to start an electric car business but got into it and realised you need successful sales of petrol fueled cars alongside your electric oh. for this to be commercially viable mm. and that money went 
missing. Okay, Tommy, so how many tweaks have you done on this show? Yeah, is that about close to 5,000? <laughs> oh, it wasn't a day. Oh, Good luck, yeah. We're getting there. <laughs> We're day. in the Dyson zone, guys. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so this is... So, all right, let's focus on headphones. And we know how big that industry is at the moment. And, I mean, I've got my Apple headphones on at the moment. I love headphones. I'm addicted yeah. to them. I, I, if, if a new brand comes out, I, I'll go check it out mm -hmm. for sure. So this is the new Dyson one. And, obviously, travelling to and from work, um, a lot of people are on trains. They're on public transport. They've actually added something to their headphones. Clean air, quality sound, on the move. Air purification inside a set of headphones. Air purification. What for you? Inside a set of headphones. Oh. Sarah, if you want to have a look at this. So I mean, we know we know what Dyson are really good at. There's a great mix of things that Dyson have already tackled. Filtration, acoustics and airflow. It's just about putting them in a smaller package that is wearable. Okay, so for anyone out there, basically what it is, it's an amazing pair of headphones that wrap around your whole ear and then from the front of those headphones connected to it is like an it's air... It's like a mask, it's isn't a, it? It's a mask that goes over your nose and your mouth and it's an air purifier. So it's got air filters in the mask attached to your headphones. It, it and then where does the air that you breathe out... Do, uh, goes I'm into guessing... your vacuum cleaner at home. Well, this, no, this <laughs> so is... So does it dispel out the bottom then? No, there's a, there's a little air pocket inside of it, Sarah. So I think right. there will be filters that you would need to replace at certain stages. It's pretty clever given the current issue around masks. Well, you, it actually looks like you... Have has anyone seen the movie Tron? Yeah. No. Tron? It's like a Tron. It's like, yeah. it's like mm. a Tron yeah. helmet. Anyone yeah. seen Silence of the Lambs? It looks a bit look more like that. Oh, it Do does a little bit. <laughs> <Do you laughs> yes, he's on the stretcher yeah. as he's strapped into the stretcher. So it, it's an, it sounds amazing. Like, I would like, love to have mm. pure air as I'm going to work wow. and listen to my music. Okay. But the thing is, if I'm sitting on a train like that, yeah. how many yeah. looks am I getting? Just a couple. A bit scary. Would be good on a plane. You know, when you're sitting thing. on the it plane, like, it gets a bit yuck. Yeah, it does after a long haul, yeah. says. It looks like a travel product. Mm. I mean, Dyson also did the bladeless fan. Yeah. I mean, yes, that, was that was genius. It, it does feel like they designed this at the start of the pandemic, took the entire pandemic mm. to get it right, and by the time they released it, the pandemic was over. <laughs> and, and they're, they're like, like oh, oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> no, I reckon people still will be onto it. Yeah, yeah for I'm sure. I'm trying to think what people will look like on public transport in 10 to 20 years' time and what they're wearing. You won't see their face at all. I mean, everything will be covered. Just bike in, helmets. In, in modern-day technology. Yeah. The Fitzy and Whippers Show is a Nova podcast. For more great content, Comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.